So in the previous video, we understood the intuition behind insertion sort and we took a very simple example like this to understand what actually is happening in insertion sort, right? So now let's try to move to some code, right? Let's actually write down the code. Of course, as important as intuition is, equally important is the ability to convert that intuition into code. Now here we had a cup, we had a few choices. We could have written this whole code in any major programming language. We could have written it in C, C++, Java, Python, right? Or more web-based languages like JavaScript or Ruby. We could have written the code in any of these programming languages, but we decided not to, right? So we will actually understand all of the code using a pseudo code. Now the pseudo in English, the word pseudo basically means false. So I'll explain you what the pseudo code is and why we are choosing it. But the reason why we did not use any specific language is because some of our students might be good at C, right? If I, so if I chose C, some of our students might, might have learned whole of programming from C. Some students may not know C, but they might know Python. Or there could be some people who are web developers who know JavaScript, who don't know other languages very well. So because we have wide spectrum of students from various backgrounds, we felt it is not apt to pick any one language over the other language, number one. Number two is there are many language specific details. There are many language specific, there are many language specific details that come into play when I start writing code in any language. For example, let's take an example, right? If I start writing code in C and C++, right? I'll have to use pointers extensively, which are not there in other languages, right? Or if I use Java or JavaScript, I might have to use object-oriented programming and use concepts called classes that somebody who is comfortable in C, C++ may not know, in, may not know classes, oh, sorry, somebody who knows C may not know classes. Of course, folks who know C++ would know about classes, inheritance, all of those stuff. But we felt that these language specific details can make the code cumbersome to understand. Because here, the whole goal of data structures and algorithms is, once you know the intuition, right? Once you know what is insertion sort, you should be able to implement it any language that you're comfortable in. That's why we wanted to choose a form of writing code which is language independent. So we wanted to use a language independent way of explaining code to you, right? Now, while doing it, of course, see, at the end of the day, there are some common programming themes in every language. Every language would have if else statements, right? Every language would have for loops. Every language would have while loops, right? Every language would have variables, right? So similarly, every language would have uh, functions, right? Most languages, right? So these are very simple constructs. So what we will do here is we will only use these simple ideas, these very simple ideas that are present in every programming language. And we will write our code in a, in a, in a very different format called a pseudo code. I'll explain you what the code is and some of the details about it. Just wait for a little while. But the reason we chose not to use any specific language is to make, is to avoid language specific details and make your learning language independent. Because today you could be writing code in C, tomorrow you might write code in Python. But your data structures and algorithms stays the same. So we would be only using very simple constructs in programming languages like these to actually show you how the code works. And to do all of that, we have, we have what we have done is, I've gone through lots of textbooks, we have gone through lots of textbooks and blogs and we, we went through a lot of ideas on how to actually present code to our students. The best source that I found was to actually use this book, was to actually use this book called The Introduction to Algorithms, right? This is a very, very popular book, both at undergraduate and graduate level. This is written by four authors, Carmen, Leeserson, Rivest, and Stein. And this book is often referred to as the CLRS book. This is the Wikipedia page for that book. It's one of the best books that I've seen for algorithms. I mean, I've, I've purchased this book uh, almost 14 years back when I was in my undergrad second year. When I was in my undergrad second year and this book still stays with me. 
it's 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 one of the best books that i've ever read about algorithms but like every other book this book also has some shortcomings that's why we do not use just this book exclusively we use many other sources for example we use wikipedia extensively for many of our for many of our content right so we don't stick to one book but for pseudo code to present how the algorithm works we felt one of the best pseudo codes that we've ever seen in any textbook is in the introduction to algorithms by clrs so we have decided to stick to the notation to the pseudo code that is available in clrs because the pseudo code is very rigorous there is there is lot of rigor in the code and it's very very accurate very very well written very very well thought through that's why we are going to use all of the pseudo code notation that is there in the clrs textbook and it's very easy for you to revise also so for example if you want to see the code for insertion sort you can just google search i'm on google image search here remember i'm on google image search so if you just type clrs insertion sort right you would get this very nice diagrams here right so if you if you just click on this this is the pseudo code for insertion sort that you will get that is there in in the textbook right forget about what the cost is what the times are we will come to this later right we'll discuss all of them later but this code snippet very crisp very clean just eight lines of beautiful code so we will use the same notation i'll explain you the notation but we'll use the pseudo code extensively we'll use pseudo codes from clrs extensively throughout this course right having said that let's go to the pseudo code itself right so i've just literally taken the pseudo code that we have seen in this image i've taken this and i've written it down here so that we can exp we can understand it here right now look look at look at what's happening here you have a function called insertion sort which is taking an array a right first thing it is taking an array a as input now now i'll explain you some of the constructs here how this for loop could be different from for loop that you have seen in c c++ or java so before we dive into the code let me give you some details so this for loop is here this for loop extends this for loop so this this line is inside the for loop this line is inside the for loop this line is also inside the for loop all these lines are inside the for loop so this this type of formatting so what they have done here is in c what you would typically do you would do a open curly braces and a closed curly braces this is what you would do in c c++ java right so clrs notation for pseudo code does not use the curly braces what it does is it uses this indentation this is called indentation basically what it says is if if this is my for loop anything that is a few spaces away inside this whole thing is inside the for loop this is the notation that is typically used in python so python uses indentations like this this is called an indentation basically it is basically you have all of this at one level all of these are maybe four spaces or eight spaces away or a tab away literally right so all this so the code looks very well very clean very neat so python uses this internally and clrs pseudo code also uses this because it's easier and legible right number 1 now if you look at these two these two lines of code these two lines of code are inside the while loop so we have a while loop inside the for loop and these two lines of code are within the while loop so this is equivalent to this this is equivalent to this okay there are no semicolons at the end like in c or c++ and this is a comment so if you have something with is with two dashes here so this is a comment right so this is a comment this line is a comment and we'll we'll learn so this is simple for loop right this is simple while loop right very simple stuff this is a variable to which i'm assigning a value so i'll go into the details right so the moment you look at this if you know any programming language c c++ java python javascript ruby you name it okay you should be able to clearly understand the key structures here you have a function here you have a for loop here all these lines of code are within the for loop you have a while loop here you are declaring so you are you are you are both declaring and assigning a value to a variable called key here you have an other variable called i right here you are assigning some value to the array right to an element in the array so a i plus 1th value you are you are assigning the value that is there in the key very simple construct so what are we just using we are using if else conditions so we are not using if else actually we are using for while variables and simple functions 
That's what we'll use. We'll use those constructs which are common across multiple programming languages. Now let's go into the code itself, right? For any code in data structures and algorithms, it is basically taking an intuition. You basically take your intuition and convert it into code. That's what data structures algorithm says. So let's take the example here so that we can better understand it, right? So this is the same example that we used here. This is the same example that we used here, right? I'm, I'm just trying to stick to the same example so that you can better connect the intuitive explanation and the code walkthrough. So first thing, your j is a variable which is going from 2 to a dot length. Here a dot length basically means the length of the array, a. Okay, that's what it means, right? So a dot length here. So here, what is our length? 8. So a dot length will be 8. Okay, so a dot length is equal to 8 from j equals to 2 to a dot length. If you look at the intuition, what, what did we start? In the very first iteration, we took the second element. We took the second element because the first element is trivially sorted. We took the second element and we tried to insert it into the already sorted or trivially sorted array. That's what we did in the intuition. Same thing we're going to do here. So your j will go from, your j will first be equal to 2 then your j is going to be equal to 3. See, see here, we are saying from j equals to 2 to a dot length, right? Which means we are saying j is going to be 2, then 3. It's going to be incremented by only a value of 1, unless I say otherwise, right? Unless I say, see, this very simple notation. Instead of writing for i equals, for j equals to 2, j less than equal to a dot length, j plus plus, the c notation, right? Instead of all of this thing, Again, a dot length is not valid in C. I'll have to compute it and place it here. So instead of this complex notation, this is a much more readable. See, the beauty of CLRS pseudocode is it's very, very readable. Because it is language independent, tries to use some of the easiest ways to read. So it says from j equals to 2 to a dot length. So j will start with j equals to 2, then it will go to j equals to 3, then 4, then 5, up to j equals to 8. Okay, that's what this outer loop is. So this is my outer loop, right? then my key is going to be a j. So my first key is going to be 5. Because my j, see, let's say when j equals to 2. So when j equals to 2, what becomes to my key? My key is going to be a of 2, which is 5. Now, this is a comment. So this line will not be executed. Then what will i be? My i is going to be 1. Right? So the first iteration, I'm trying to walk you through the very first iteration. Now let's go to this inner loop. I'll call this the inner loop because this is this is a loop within a loop. This is my outer loop, right? So in my inner loop, what am I saying? While i is greater than 0 and ai is greater than key, right? While ai is greater than key, while, while, while these two are true, you basically do this, uh, do this swapping operation or moving to the right type of operation. Okay, here let's see. Here what's happening? Your 5... See, i is less than, so when this starts, right, your i equals to 1. So while i greater than 0, yes, i is greater than 0. And ai, what is ai now? ai will be 6. See, what is my ai? ai is going to be a1, which is 6. And ai is greater than key. Yes, ai is greater than key because my key is 5. Right, my ai is greater than my key. When that happens, what is it saying? It's saying, take your ai plus 1. So your ai plus 1 value, what is ai plus 1 is nothing but a2. It is saying make your a2 equals to a1, right? What is a1? 6. So a2 will become 6, right? So what's happening to my array now? My array, my whole array stays the same. My first element is 6. Now this element 6 got moved to the right. So my 6 moved here. There is still 6 here, right? Because I didn't, I haven't yet changed it. My 3, 1, 8, 7, 2, 4, everything stays the same. Now, as soon as I executed this, my 6 got copied here. My 6 replaced my 5, right? Then i equals to i minus 1. So what happened to my i? My i became 0. Now this loop again restarts because this is a loop, right? This is a loop. Now here, while i is greater than 0, no, i is equal to 0 now. So I'll come out of this loop. As soon as I come out of this loop, it says a i plus 1 equals to key. Now, what is a i plus 1? It is nothing but a 1 equals to key. a 1 is this. This is 1, right? This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, it says a 1 equals to key. What is key? 5. 
So what's happening now? At the end of the first iteration, at the end of my first outer iteration, my first, so this became five. So what is my array now? My array now is five, six, three, one, eight, seven, two, four. So at the end of the at the end of my first iteration, so as soon as this is over, again this loop starts. Now my, my j becomes three. So here my j became three. As soon as j became three, what happened? My a1 and a2 are already sorted. So at the end of this loop, right, if my j equals to two at the end of this loop, right, my a1 and a2 are sorted. Now again I'll start. Now I'll take again this whole thing repeats itself. This whole thing repeats itself, right? I've shown you an example when j equals to 2. The same thing you can do when j equals to 3. Keep repeating this example, right? So what I want you to do to understand this code better is, so I've shown you the flow of this code when j equals to 2. That's what I've done. Now, on a notebook, what, so at the end of j equals to 2, this is, the, this is the array that you have. Now take j equals to 3 because this loop is running, right? Now try to write the same thing on your notebook. So then you'll know how these, so how this inner loop and outer loop are working. In a nutshell, what's happening is, so, so you want you want to do that walkthrough on your pay, on your notebook so that you understand this code better. Right? In a nutshell, let's understand what's happening in a nutshell. In a nutshell, this J variable, right, is going from the second element to the eighth element at any point, as soon as suppose J equals to three. I'm sure that the this sub array, this sub array is already sorted. So at any point, let's say you my j equals to six. Let's say you my j equals to six. As it keeps iterating, right? My j would become equal to six at some point. So when my j equals to six, the situation I will be in, right, is uh, is this exactly. When my j equals one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. When my j equals to six, I'm trying to take the sixth element and trying to insert into this array, which is already sorted, right? When my j equals to six, a1 to a5 are already sorted. So I'm taking the value of a6 or aj into key, right? And I'll start from aj minus one from here. From here, rest of the elements. This is exactly what the intuition says, right? What does intuition say? I take this element, I compare it with each of these elements right and keep moving these elements to the right if they are greater than the cell greater than the key that i have that's exactly what i'm doing so what i'm doing here is when j equals to 6 i'm taking from j equals to, from 5 up to 0 that's what this is this is saying my i equals to 5 up to 0 so i'm going to go from 5 to 0 and when i'm going from 5 to 0 i'll keep moving these elements to the right if they are greater than my key if they're greater than my key, I'm going to move it to the right. That's what I'm doing. We have seen this with j equals to 2. Same thing is happening. At the end, wherever the key element should be placed, I'll place it. Very, very simple code to understand. But I strongly recommend you to actually repeat. See, I've done this simple exercise with j equals to 2, right? I want you to do it with j equals to 3, j equals to 4, 5, so that you understand this code better. If you're very good at programming, you would have understood it by now. It's like if you're comfortable with any programming language, this is straightforward, right? These are simply two loops. You have an outer loop and an inner loop. That's it. Very straightforward code. Nothing fancy, nothing complicated here.